Uh, Leeds could stop buying championship players, and, maybe. And the, yeah, maybe so. Um, yeah, so ha, you're a Leeds fan. Obviously, it's tough watching this year. What do you actually think? Just do you, do you think you really are in a relegation scrap, or do you think it's a conversation we should have probably think, at the end of May rather than at the at the start of April? I think we've been saying the same thing for a few years, and that what we're missing is leadership. I mean, let's let's talk, let's part this, and let's talk about when we get to the Leeds game, okay? Because we've 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 got some more feedback, but. But let's talk about our respective teams when we get to those games. Okay. Um, Tom Andrews got in touch. He talked about one of the England Knights squads of mission. We talked about the, the England Knights squad last week. Do you want to tell us who he thinks missed out? Uh, George Lawler. Lawler. Not many people can play anywhere in the forwards for 80 minutes. And have him replace Montongo. That guy's a myth and only puts up reunion stats. <laughs> um, I mean, obviously he had to have a dick at a left. See you play, didn't he, Tom Andrews? But George Lawler probably the makeup of the squads, the way I saw it, and I don't know if you think the same, was it was more rewarding the second half of last season and then loyalty to the team to the players who were in the groups last year for the England squad and the England Knight squad, both performance squads. So I think there wasn't that much opportunity for anyone who wasn't in the conversation last year to be in the conversation at this stage this year. I mean But George you... Lawler's George Lawler has impressed this season much more than he's ever impressed before so I, I would say when the Knights squad reconvene uh, selection wise later on in the season in the second half of the season EPS is announced George Lawler might be in, might be in that conversation so the England Knights are now playing a game aren't they against they're playing at least one game against France in this country possibly more yeah. games than one yeah we think maybe three games yep there's, there's talk of potentially a game against Jamaica and then yep. there's Wales as well who are another option I think realistically they, they both need World Cup practice mm-hmm. so should we move on to the shout outs yeah just a couple of things coming David Cantrell the uh, Dr Hideous himself got in touch by email he said I reckon this is worth mentioning on the pod heard about it on Dave Woods is one um, and it, it's uh, the Power Mary film the um, powerful women from the Papua New Guinea so if you go to powermerryfilm.com um, it's, t- it, it's talking about screening now the, the first screening is tonight in London I know David's at that screening um, as we record on the 8th of April so it's too late for anyone to get down to that I think now but Manchester and Warrington and Huddersfield all have screenings coming up on the 15th, 16th and 17th of April respectively so if you go to powermerryfilm.com um, that's power spelled how you'd expect it Mary M-E-R-I film.com then you can find all the details of those screenings and how to book as well sounds good and um, then, yeah and finally thanks to Alan Walker for the donation this week he sent into Super League Pop very much appreciated he's urged us to keep supporting the community game and we try We yeah we do I've, I've been thinking we should maybe do um, maybe let people bid for a little bit of for a donation so if people support a community club who've got a GoFundMe initiative or that sort of thing going on or are trying to raise funding for a specific thing then we can spare you know like, lo- like lottery so. funding £20 yeah. that's about what we can spare at the moment but we hey, look, that, that, is, that is rugby league lottery funding is yeah. that <laughs> we can spare £20 out of the SLP funds I guess so yep. if people want to get in touch we can have a look and see why don't we set up a Google form for that to uh, look let clubs amateur clubs to um, do you want me to do that why are you just making me do work I, I will do it <laughs> yeah we, we, it's, it's like 34 no, seconds no I, I think they can send an email to superleaguepod at gmail.com I Fair think enough. it's the easiest way to get in touch and then we'll look Amazing. through and we'll see and maybe we'll make more than one award over the season but that's a I think that's a nice way to get back well, engaged as long as the donations keep clubs. coming yeah we will keep giving yep okay that is um, an extended opening to the show this week to the rest of this season but I think there were some good discussion points in there Dom we're going to move on to news now from around the world of Rugby League The Rugby League world was shocked to learn that Brian Barwick has confirmed he will stand down as chairman of the RFL <laughs> oh, who cares Brian Barwick informed stakeholders who are the stakeholders 
that he will not seek a third term in charge and will step down from the role on July 24th. He basically sent an email shout out to all the uh, clubs, <laughs> which is more than what he's done in the last six years. Um, he will remain with the sport because he's now in charge of the Rugby League World Cup. And it was it was going so well with the Rugby League World Cup. I was really impressed with them. To be fair, he was already the... Um, chairman of the mm. Rugby League World Cup he's now just got a different role leading the Rugby League World Cup as the president of the Rugby League World Cup so he's previously been the chief executive of the FA and then um, he's going to step down as the chair of Super League Europe and the uh, and the Rugby League World Cup as well Simon Johnson currently the RFL senior independent director that's a generic job title will act as interim chair of the RFL from the 24th of July until a new chair is able to start so until they do the big spinner in Red Hall which one of our mates wants the job I think it's whoever comes forward isn't it I don't think they've got I don't think we have well we certainly never took advantage of any little black books Mr Barker's got so so we don't have any ourselves what is what is going on with the move to Manchester by the way from Reynolds is that, is that still happening? We heard out about that. It's a long. That was a long-term strategy, not an immediate strategy. Right, okay. um, but I've not heard anything. No, I don't know if I don't know if Manchester City's plans are still the same for basically allowing other people to come into their sporting centre of excellence world that they're creating. Well, that was uh, that was, that was also pre Super League split. So, so should we go to the feedback? Yeah, Tom Andrews said, says a lot about what he achieved. When the notification came up on my phone, I went, who? <laughs> Carsten says, thank God, but did he get a new job in the Rugby League World Cup? Hashtag jobs for the boys. Paul Chamberlain said, thought he'd already fucked off, to be <laughs> honest. Hopefully the RFL just ignores the position and takes the salary as a cost saving. Literally contributed nothing to the game. The, the RFL do need to do some cost saving. I think that's a sensible, that's a sensible decision. I mean... Genuinely, I do think no one in that role would add a net benefit more so than Brian Barwick did mm. in his time. It it just feels that way. It felt like he never he was never visible. He was never accountable. He was never responsible. He I can't say what achievements he got other than he did play a big role in the twenty twenty one World Cup being awarded. Mm-hmm. Um, however. How difficult is it to to do that? I, I, maybe he played a role in us getting the funding from the government. That's come alongside all of that. That's a possibility. Um, so, so if that's the case, well done to him on, on that. That's you know for six years worth of work. Um, I'm happy to him to say goodbye with him with that being his legacy uh, because he's done sod all else and he's li- is he's presided over the time. Over a challenging time with the with the split, like yeah. you say, it is. It's it's going to be interesting to see what happens with the RFL for the next few years. What they need to evolve now that they don't have Super League. There's a big change coming. We, we we you know we'll either see some changes in a a phoenix rising from the ashes, or it'll just continue plodding along the way that it's done. Well, they've got. They have got to change. The direction has been changed for it by by not being in in control of Super League now, and with Barwick leaving the Super League board as well as the RFL position, mm-hmm. one of those links between the two organisations gets removed even more. So, so you're right. It's a challenging time for the RFL. They probably have to redefine exactly what they what they stand for and what their role is within the sport. And make sure all the stakeholders who receive these uh, this this information from Mr. Barwick understand what role they're meant to play. Do you uh, want to read the next news story? Up? Yeah, of course. Wigan Warriors forward Gabe Hamlin has been suspended by the Rugby Football League after being charged with a UK anti-doping violation. The 22-year-old, who joined from South Sydney Rabbitohs in October 2017, has returned to his native Australia. Wigan will look to support Gabriel through this process, said Warriors chairman Ian Lennigan. Gabriel has requested to be closer to his family during this difficult time and we fully support this request. He will be unavailable for selection for Wigan during his provisional suspension by the RFL, his club has said in their statement. Loads of people got in touch. Let's do that first. So Tom Andrews said, hope Wigan don't turn hypocrites and sack him or Mullen and put them through rehab as they did with Zach. Uh, at M9UHL said well Rugby League has become a brotherhood of wife beaters cokeheads drink drivers and general shithousery always wish my dad would have made me play uh, when I was younger dread to think what I would have become 
Sick of this now. No more for me. If you get done, RFL Super League needs to be a lifetime ban. But I'm sure Wigan will give him a future contract with a handshake as a, and a hazard to say seal the deal. Well, we don't we don't get pen to paper on them, do we? <laughs> Shoddy Mungo Shoddy Mungo says blame Zach. The the litany of things that have gone wrong for Wigan since he he signed could fill a book. Paul Chamberlain said the gift that keeps on giving together with United it's just not Mark's year is it serves him right for supporting a couple, a couple of dirty grub teams still we're going to have plenty of good youngsters from the win over the Aussies Academy such as Morgan Smithies so it would be good to blood them better that than wasting time with money on bang average juicers um, Mark Butler says Wigan in drug test crisis drink drive crisis family crap tri- crisis coaching appointment crisis and not being able to hang on to a 20 point league crisis I definitely think we should allow them to steer the game's direction by taking 70 grand for the West Wales, West Wales Raiders and uh, what other, the other ideas are what could possibly go wrong so you've obviously got your thoughts on this um, we've had too many nice things as Wigan Warriors supporters so now we're having to be punished and uh, and this is this this year is our penance for having too many nice things <laughs> Because uh, every time we have something good happen, something bad happens, and um, ma- we don't know, do we? We don't know about what exactly has happened with Gabriel Hamlin. We don't know. Uh, I think today was his deadline to uh, to put in a case against the suspension, mm-hmm. and I don't believe he has done. I'm not aware of him having done so. Uh, the club have been quite clear in that any more announcements around this are Gabriel Hamlin's news to release, not the Wigan Warriors' news to release. So he'd have to be comfortable with giving more details around the circumstances of this which I think is fair enough uh, to, to, to be honest um, it's just very disappointing very disappointing it, it, are we going to see more of this do we think I mean it's obvious that the uh, Mark just left the room he's that upset like this is what happens when we can get a drug ban welcome to Dom's podcast we're, we're not going to talk about rugby league anymore. <laughs> oh, I haven't plugged it in. Do you? Do I think we're going to see more of it? Do I think we're going to see more bands? Well, we don't know. If, we don't. What we don't know, and I'm very much up in the air about, is whether this was recreational drugs, like so many of the recent issues, like Hardacre, Thomas Mins, Alex. Uh, so this was after Adam the Leeds Walker. game, wasn't it? That's when the drug test. Yeah, test which was also when uh, Zach's was, wasn't it? Because that was after his Leeds game, so it was, yeah. Um, but we don't know whether it was, uh, you know, the cocaine that seems to be the uh, the problem, yeah, or if it was a performance enhancing substance, um, which I think is the interesting part of this story because I, I I don't see Gabe Hamlin as necessarily the guy who might be out partying too much and and having a bit of um, of coke. So I I worry that it was performance enhancing and I worry what controls either way the club have in place he is only 22 so you know he's got you know <coughs> possibly a two year ban you know spends his time two years comes back his contract his contract with Wigan is up at the end of this year sorry <coughs> um, uh, this is going to be a tricky edit isn't it yep yeah, right. Before we had to break, um, Gabriel Hamlin's contract with Wigan was up at the end of this year. He was looking for a move back down under back home. That would have always been his intention, really. Right. Um, would be to return back to Australia after having sort of had a grounding in the game at the professional level, being able to prove himself in a way that he might not have been able to do if he was just playing lower grades in Australia. Um, but so, so from that point of view. I don't see him coming back to the Wigan Warriors. No. Nope. I do think the Wigan Warriors will give him the support that he, he needs to deal with how this is going to dif- affect him difficultly because, like you say, he is a 22-year-old uh, kid, but he's also a professional sports person. Yep. He should know better. Okay. Well, I, I, do, I, I don't know... The arguments, you know, that the Brian Carney stands on the players thinking that they um, are bigger than the club. The Chris Radlinski re- retort that there's no culture problem at the club, but we can't babysit the players when they're not at the club, when they're not working, as it were. I, I don't know where I sit on all of that. I think there's there's problems at the Wigan club. I've, I've aired these problems to the club. So, you know, 
there's, there's there's concerns and issues with what we're being told as fans so what, what, uh, what is, we're being what made is to the feel biggest as fans. problem that you see then uh, 